Did you know that your obturator internus muscle and your piriformis muscle are best friends? Did you know that you can't have more hip mobility without first having pelvic stability? In this video, I'm going to show you how to address the obturator internus with deep tissue massage. Let's get right into how I apply deep tissue massage for the obturator internus muscle, a huge provider of stability for the pelvis and the hip. Before I start palpating the attachments of the obturator internus, I first want to show you where I am on the pelvis to give you an idea of what I'm doing when you see me working on the actual body. So first thing I do is I like to sit at the level of the pelvis and then I'm going to first come in here. So you have the ischial tuberosity here and then of course the ischium and this would be the medial side of the ischium, meaning the lateral side would be facing the table. And from here, I'm going to slide my finger along the bone here. And I'm actually feeling for the obturator foramen, which is the hole that you can see there. So once I'm here, I'm going to compress that tissue into the bone. And then I'm going to apply a transverse friction massage stroke. Before I do that, though, I like to stand up because that gets me more perpendicular to the ischium. Okay, so then from there, I'm gonna compress that tissue into the ischium. And you can watch my finger here. I'm going to move here or in this direction. And then I'm going to move side to side. And that's how I apply that friction massage stroke or transverse friction massage stroke to address the attachments of the obturator internus. Once I address that area, I'll come out and I'll recognize that I address this area through here. And that's kind of the first part of addressing the attachments of the obturator internus. And then from there, I'll come back in, I go back to being seated and I'll slide my finger along that ramus of the ischium feeling for the obturator internus again and i'll repeat the same thing where i stand and i try to be perpendicular to the bone and compress those attachments into the ramus of the ischium applying that friction massage stroke or transverse friction massage stroke so i basically cover from here over to here covering the entire ramus of the ischium and then from there i would come back out and then the third part is going in to where now I'm going. And so I might change my angle because you can see that in order to be perpendicular to that, I would have to change my angle. So again, I will, I, a lot of times I will do that from a seated position and I might be coming in, you know, here and then working my way over to here and while seated addressing her side of the pubic bone. So I look at that as the third part of palpation for the attachments of the obturator internus. So when I palpate the attachments of the obturator internus, I am always, I always start my palpation from a seated position. And that allows me to be at the level of the pubic bone and the level of the ischium or the pelvic bone that's closest to the table. So right now I'm on the medial side of her ischium and I'm going to slide my finger along the ischium from a seated position until I feel for that obturator foramen. The other thing I wanted to point out to you here is that I'm using my middle finger because I find that it allows for more specificity. It also happens to be the longest finger, so that allows me to go further um, along the ischium and again, feeling for that obturator foramen. But in doing so, you can see that I flex my ring finger and I flex my pinky finger so that those fingers are out of the way and I'm just using that middle finger for my palpation. Feeling for that obturator foramen. Once I get there, 
I'm going to go back to where I'm standing and that's going to put me closer to being perpendicular to the ramus of the issue. So again, compressing the obturator internus into the ramus of the ischium, and then moving my finger up and down and side to side while I'm maintaining the compression of the attachments of the obturator internus. So again, compressing the attachments of the obturator internus into the ramus of the ischium. While maintaining that compression, I'm sliding my finger up and down and side to side, applying that transverse friction massage stroke to the attachments of the obturator internus. So from here, I'm going to cover that entire ramus of the ischium. Once I've addressed part one and part two of the ischium, I like to rotate the pelvis back because I find that as I address the attachments to the obturator internus, the pelvis starts to rotate forward. So in this case, she's lying on her right side and we're addressing the right obturator internus. And then what I do is I'll just take my hand and I'm going to rotate that left pelvis back and then I'll, I'll have her flex the thigh a little bit more. And so then that allows me to address or better address the attachments of the obturator internus as they come into the pubic bone. Okay, so part three for palpation of the obturator internus, again, starting from a seated position, flexing my ring finger and my pinky finger, I'm going to slide along the medial side of the ischium. So right below my finger here is the ramus of the ischium. And I'm sliding along that ischium or the ramus of the ischium. And I'm feeling for that obturator uh, foramen, but I'm also aiming for the pubic bone at this point. So here I'm on the pubic bone and I'm gonna compress the attachments of the obturator internus into the pubic bone, and I'm going to apply that transverse friction massage stroke where, again, I'm compressing the attachments of the obturator internus into the pubic bone, and I'm sliding my finger up and down and side to side. Now here, I'm going to remain seated because the angle of her pubic bone, and this is the case in most cases, um, it just, it just allows me to be closer to perpendicular to the pubic bone to be seated when I'm addressing the attachments of the obturator internus as they attach to the pubic bone. The other thing I'll do if my finger is fatiguing at all, which does happen, I will be sure to slide my finger out slowly before I get to the point where my finger is fatiguing enough that I need to come out as fast as I can. Before I address the femoral attachment of the obturator internus, I first wanted to show you what my thought process is here as far as finding the distal attachment or addressing the distal attachment. So considering that everybody's compensating in some way, when the person is prone and you're not using a bolster, which I would recommend not using a bolster, by the way, um, if you're looking at the lower extremity, what you should see is that the femur is medially rotated or internally rotated, and that also goes for the lower leg. And then, so we would say that the femur and the lower leg are pronating. But if we look down at the foot, what we're gonna see is inversion, adduction, and plantar flexion, which are all components of supination. So when the client is prone and you're not using a bolster, what you're seeing is a lower extremity that's pronated until you get to the ankle and now you have a foot that's supinating, meaning that the foot is inverted, adducted, and plantar flex. If I find that the, the lower leg and the femur are not medially rotated, what I'll do is I'll have the client stand up multiple times after I start to palpate the 
or after I palpate the distal attachment of the optorator internus. The reason I have them stand up and go back is that every time they go back to being prone, their brain is recognizing that they have stability and the femur or thigh will rotate medially as the brain recognizes stability on this right side. So then that allows me to work smarter and not harder, and I can be more specific when I'm trying to address um, the distal attachment of the obturator internus. Okay, so before I address the distal attachment of the obturator internus, I first wanted to show you the greater trochanter and the what we're aiming for when we're addressing the distal attachment of the obturator internus. So looking at the femur from a superior perspective here, uh, this is the greater trochanter through here. And what we're aiming for, it's hard to see in the frame right now, I'm gonna immediately rotate the femur, is this blue area right through here. So you can see this blue area in here. And we're aiming for that area there. And looking at that femur from a superior perspective, you can see that if the femur or thigh medially rotates, how that's going to give me more access to the distal attachment of the obturator internus. So what I'm looking for there is I'm looking for that femur or thigh to medially rotate so that I can better access that distal attachment. Another way to say that is I'm looking for the brain to recognize stability so that that femur will medially rotate or internally rotate on its own so then I can gain better access to the distal attachment of the obturator internus and as it turns out the distal attachment of the gemelli. Okay, so first I'm going to feel for the superior aspect of that greater trochanter. Once I find the superior aspect of the greater trochanter, I'm going to move medially and I'm visualizing how the obturator internus would come into or onto the greater trochanter. And I'm feeling for that tendon. And when I say tendon, it's important to point out that the obturator internus or the distal attachment of the obturator internus actually blends into the tendon of the gemelli. So if you're not familiar with the gemelli, you have an inferior and a superior gemelli that are part of the deep six lateral rotator group. So the obturator internus also being a deep lateral rotator or external rotator actually blends into the distal tendon of the gemelli. So I'm feeling for that tendon. Once I feel that I've got there, I've reached that depth, I'm going to compress that tissue into the trochanter, and then I'm going to move my finger up and down and side to side, applying that transverse friction massage stroke to the distal attachment of the massage stroke to the distal attachment of the obturator. And once I've done that, I'm gonna to try to work deeper and deeper to where I'm getting closer and closer to that tendon as it comes into the greater trochanter. Now there are times where I'll use my thumb because I can definitely get more depth with my thumb. What I don't like about using my thumb is it's too broad. That doesn't mean I won't address that attachment, but I like to use my finger because I find that I have more specificity with my finger. But you can use your thumb it's just a broader tool. If you like this video, hit the like button and stick around to see my most recent video where I apply the same massage technique to the piriformis muscle. It's coming right up. Thanks for watching.